Attention, attention, all Area 51 stormers. That means you, Larry, put down the flamethrower. Before we storm the military's worst kept secret base, I want you to know that having 500,000 of you here really helps with my anxiety. The 20 guards who can fire 800 rounds a minute with their M16s won't be able to stop us all. Hey, where are y'all going? The Odd to New Finland Paranormal Podcast brings you the best in East Coast esoterica on the first of every month. Together, we can keep it growing by sharing the show on social media, subscribing to the show wherever you may be listening to it from, and by leaving feedback about your favorite episodes. Wait, what am I supposed to do with 500,000 egg salad sandwiches? The Odd to New Finland Paranormal Podcast. Always available, always free, always odd. It's the Odd, Odd, Odd to New Finland. Ghostly greetings from your host, Jonathan. Mysteries, ghosts, monsters, and lore. East Coast esoterica and so much more. If it's up to you, friend, it's on the up to you found line. <laughs> Greetings from the oldest city in North America. I'm your host, John Mallard, bringing you the best in East Coast esoterica. You, my friend, have stumbled upon the Odd Newfoundland Paranormal Podcast for the month of September 2019. Welcome to episode 74 of your monthly paranormal variety show. Having your hair is better than pumpkin spice lattes. And, you know, a nice roaring outdoor fire in the fall. Oh, my God. Well, I'm not so much on the pumpkin spice. That's more of my wife likes that kind of stuff. But me, I love the fires outside. And why do I feel that way about you? Well, because you're wonderful. A masterpiece. Beautifully made. Important to people because you're important to me. Highly favored by your creator. Whether that's God or by the law of averages and physics working in tandem. You, my friend, are an oddball. And here on this show, your family and we are one. Thank you so very much for taking the time to download... Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for being a part of my show. This Paranormal Variety Show is just some crazy dude talking to himself until somebody downloads this. So thank you for proving once again that as odd as I am, I'm not insane. Speaking of insane, what a crazy month September is already shaping up to be. Let's talk about comings and goings in my world. The foster baby I've been looking after for the last year, he's not going to be here any longer after this month. That's right. On October 1st, when the next show comes out, my little foster guy will be gone. It's a tough one to swallow for me and my family. He's been with us for a year. And uh, it's a sad, sad time, but we're also really happy because the family is reunited. And that's what it's all about. But man, oh man, does it hurt. And uh, let me just tell you that having this podcast here is kind of like therapy for me. It gives me a chance to kind of talk about this stuff with you guys. And, man, I I think that's so cool that I can connect with people out there about this. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there who do the foster parenting thing, man. It's very isolating. Just anybody who does it will understand exactly what I'm saying. They'll nod their head and go, yeah, yeah, you're right. Just want to let you guys know, though, that I'm so happy you took the time tonight because this helps me. Major, major get those feelings out there, man. They got to happen. Because I know what it's like to lose a child. And it's not a, all, it's not exactly the most happy experience. We'll just leave it at that. But I'll tell you who will be having a great experience. It'll be you guys next month. Because October is going to be huge. Remember how a few months ago I was a filthy, rotten liar and told you guys there's going to be like bonus content and I was all excited about it? Well... Unfortunately, I had, count them, one, two, three different professional wrestling guests. I wanted to have professional wrestlers on this month because wrestling's going to explode again soon. 
And uh, I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to have that. But you know what? I had two cancellations and a no-show. So what does that make me do? Well, first of all, it makes me never want to promote professional wrestling ever again on my podcast and waste my breath. That's for sure. That's step one. And step two, it means that you guys get denied that bonus content again. And the reason why is because I have to go back to somebody else I recorded to put them on here. And, uh, you know, it's only fair that I go with the next person in line. So a little later in show, I'm going to have my good friend Michelle De Roche come on. And she is a bona fide paranormal celebrity. You guys will love her. Um, just, just really cool. Been on all kinds of shows. I think you're going to really enjoy the chat we have, especially about the ghost box. We have just a, a really, really good banter about that. Um, Dr. Laura's going to be talking about the giant squid that came up here in Newfoundland. Oh, man, I can't wait for you guys to hear that. And Betty... And, uh, you know, in her words to consider with Betty Collins, she's going to be actually chatting about fall colors and autumn and that kind of stuff. So it's a really nice kind of change here as we switch into kids going back to school and sweater weather. And, uh, you know, as I see my own children getting ready now to go back to school and stuff like that, I always tell people this is it's a happy time for parents because we finally get a break for us who actually stay home. <laughs> but I'll be honest, I kind of miss my, my little girl when she goes back to school. So. I, uh, I'm one of those people who can relate to the commercial, you know, the Walmart one where they're all like, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And you got like dude and he's like skating on the back of the shopping cart with all the school supplies in it. <laughs> I can relate to that, but I also miss my little girl. She's great fun to have home. So it's a bit bittersweet, just like everything in my life, I guess. I'll tell you what's not bittersweet. Yeah. I got some really cool news last month that I shared on the Facebook group. If you guys aren't on the Odd the New Flam Paranormal Podcast Facebook page, you should jump on there. I'm always putting up weird stuff and weird pictures and news about the podcast and stuff like that. You should check it out. But anyway, I digress. We actually managed to hook a proper sponsor. Yeah. The, you know, the whole premise of this podcast is about discovering things that are out of the ordinary. And I recently found a service that helps businesses stand out from the crowd. It's called Blip Billboards. They help businesses and podcasts like mine of any size with any budget get seen on large format digital billboards. For me, seeing that podcast logo up there was a dream come true. To get the word out was definitely a dream come true with a big electronic billboard. I never thought I'd be able to afford something like that. Uh, but thanks to Blip and their pay what you want approach, this dream is a reality. It truthfully didn't cost a whole lot for me, man, and, and it didn't take a lot of time either. All you do is pick the billboards you'd like to advertise on, set your daily schedule and budget, then boom, you upload your ad design. Once your ad is approved, your ad will be live for everyone to see. Blip Billboards is great for standing out locally or boosting awareness nationally, so whether you're a small tech startup, a local restaurant, or anywhere in between, your businesses can now afford to make these big impressions in little locations that matter to you. What would your billboard say today? Try Blip Billboards. Go to my special URL. This is just for the Odd the Newfoundland listeners. This is you guys. To sign up for a free account. So you don't have to pay for that. That's free. Because you're listening to this podcast. And you'll get a $25 blip credit to help you get started. That's right. They're going to give you 25 bucks and a promo code if you put in blipbillboards.com slash O-D-D. That's blipbillboards. B-L-I-P-B-I-L-L-B-O-A-R-D-S dot com slash O-D-D. That's odd. How cool is that? Thank you, Blip, for making this show possible today, my beautiful sponsor. And I hope you guys give these guys a chance uh, from the bottom of my heart. You, you guys have got to check these guys out. Follow that link. Help out my podcast. Great way to support the show. And uh, maybe support your upcoming event. I, I seen one the other day. Dude head off uh, his friend Steve. <laughs> His friend Steve's bachelor party, and it was a picture of his friend Steve, and he was in a diaper, and it said, Steve's bachelor party, and it was just, it was just funny, it was just funny, and, uh, but just to grow your business, imagine you, you could do that, and uh, I'm so excited to announce that next month, the On the Newfoundland Paranormal Podcast is going to be featured on Blip, and uh, it's going to be for the last two weeks of October and a little bit of November, so I'm very, very proud of that, and I'm glad you guys are along for the ride. What else do I got here on my little list of things to get to before we jump into the paranormal news? Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Time for me to check in with the workouts. Operation Get Slim is in effect. After three and a half months of working and lifting heavy weights, 
Now it's time to start doing more complex motions and stuff like that and to get the heart rate up and to start cutting my calories, which I started three weeks ago now, almost, and I'm proud to say that I'm already after dropping a pile of weight, and that's that's with being super hydrated too, so I am just tickled pink. Things are going great on my end, and I'll let you guys know when I hit that first milestone. When I hit, when I lose those first 25 pounds, I'll let you guys know. Um, I pulled the rug out from under everyone a few months ago, and I told everyone there was going to be bonus content, but I never delivered. Well, this October... I'm delivering. I'm making it up to you guys because I love you. And for all the subscribers out there, you deserve this so very much. So there's going to be multiple episodes of the Odd the Newfoundland Panel podcast in October. I'm not going to say how many, but I'm going to say this. There's going to be one Halloween special that drops on the 1st of October and then multiple episodes and mini episodes that drop throughout the month. So stay tuned. I think you guys are going to really, really like the new content. Guys, enough rambling with this guy. It's time to get started. Yeah. Dig in, open up your very, very, very weird eyes. This has been a weird month, man. August was not bonkers. This time for the Odd the Newfoundland Paranormal Podcast, Paranormal News. <laughs> Somewhere between the funnies <laughs> and, and the obituaries is... Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Paranormal news. <laughs> I'd be remiss if I didn't start this podcast with kind of following up to something I mentioned on the last podcast. It's been the talk of the paranormal and especially the UFO <laughs> culture, we'll say. But this whole Storm Area 51 thing has just gotten completely insane. Speaking of which, how do you guys like the new bumper I made? Just for you guys. I wrote it and produced it myself. Now plan to send thousands of people through the gates of Area 51 seems it was actually turned into now, get this, a freaking music festival. Yeah. The event which is scheduled for September seems to have transformed into an actual legitimate alien-themed music festival named Alien Stock that will run from the 19th to the 22nd. Ah, oh, sorry. Several big brands have, have pledged to support the event, including Bud Light, which promises to set up an Area 51 themed bar, and Arby's, which is offered to send a food truck. According to Maddie Roberts, the man who started the original campaign, the festival will include live music and other attractions. However, plans to evade the base itself seem to be on hold. Must be the M16s. The event is set to be held in the town of Rachel with support from the little Ailey Inn. So that's that's the name of the inn. A-L-E-I-N-N. There are even rumors suggesting that the band Limp Biscuit will perform there. Wow. Because, I mean, Fred Durst is probably an alien anyway. <laughs> so there's my follow-up. But the Area 51 Stormers, I, I, I'll stop tormenting you guys. I mean, I, the Flat Earthers get it hard enough, okay? The Flat Earthers get it, like, on every show. I, I've tried not to get into it, but, like, every show, people are all over the Flat Earthers. Now, every show, we're all over the Area 51ers. So, so let's stop this now. Let's just, let's just enjoy the concert and what it has become, which I think is kind of cool. Especially if you have an Arby's food truck. I mean, come on. Anyway. And now some more follow-up with the story we actually talked about not too long ago. Yeah, I can remember a while back when I mentioned that they're going to be dredging the lake of Loch Ness and doing DNA tests and all that stuff. Well, I actually got two stories that are right on the heels of each other that came out this month. And I want to go over them with you because because this is really cool. A boat skipper has captured a sonar image of something large lurking in the depths of the world-famous loch. A 24-year-old Mike Bell had been taking a group of tourists out of the water on June 27th when he picked up the anomalous object approximately 115 feet beneath the surface. When he circled around to scan the same spot again, the object had completely disappeared. I would think, I would like to think, it is our creature, Nessie, he said. It's my first year being the skipper in the boat. In five months, I've never seen anything, and it had to have been something big to be on a sonar like that. An object of that size, I would think, is way too big for the normal species in the lock. It must have been about five or six minutes we spent trying to pick up this creature again, but with no luck. This year is turning out to be one of the best for Loch Ness Monster sightings, with eight reported sightings this year alone. Man. Must have been that Mary Lock Messner show I did for Christmas time last year. <laughs> it's my first sighting of Nessie, and I think my dad is a wee bit jealous as he's never seen it. 
Wow. This actually coincides with that follow-up of the report, which means that they want more time now, which means they found something. So here it comes. A biological study of Loch Ness has produced a credible explanation for the Loch Ness monster phenomenon. The study, which is led by New Zealand geneticist Professor Neil Gemmel, involved analyzing the DNA, DNA contained within 250 samples of Loch Ness water to determine what is living there. Numerous species were identified, including 15 different species of fish and a whopping 3,000 species of bacteria, among other things. Part of the study also involved investigating the validity of of various monster hypotheses, such as whether or not the creature could be a prehistoric reptile, a sturgeon, or even a giant catfish. Now, according to the team, the results have helped to reveal a plausible explanation for the plethora of Loch Ness monster sightings reported over the years, and especially this one. There have been over a thousand reported sightings of something in Loch Ness, Ness, which has driven this notion of a monster being in the water, said Professor Gemmel. For those sightings, there are around four main explanations about what has been seen. Our research essentially discounts most of those theories, however. One theory remains plausible, though. Sadly, however, we will need to wait just a little bit longer to find out what that theory is. Oh, come on, Professor Gremmel, you tease. The team's findings will be revealed at an event in Dramhanet next month, and I will be sure to release the results of that next month on the October 1st show, our Halloween special. Let's see if Nessie will come to our Halloween party. Well, before I get in on my next uh, story, I, I got a little something here I need to play you guys. Tainted drug turns babies into werewolves. A medical blunder has resulted in more than a dozen babies developing werewolf syndrome in Spain. The bizarre accident reportedly happened when a, sp a special preparation of the acid reflux drug, amazoprol, became inadvertently contaminated with monoxidil, a drug used to treat baldness. Amazoprol is... Amazoprol is... You know, I, I'm just going to call it the drug from this point forward. It's hard to pronounce. It's usually taken by adults in capsule form. But because young children are, are unable to swallow the capsules, it has to be made into a special syrup. The babies who took the contaminated medicine ended up exhibiting the symptoms of hypertrichosis, or werewolf syndrome, which is characterized by abnormal hair growth all over the body. So far, there have been 16 reported cases, and 22 batches of the drug have since been recalled. Fortunately, however, the condition has disappeared in those who have stopped taking it. Health authorities have appealed for anyone with excessive hair growth to get to your doctor right now. <laughs> I know, I know. I can only play a few seconds of it, though. Stupid copyright. Okay. Space is the final frontier from what we've heard over the years in many different TV shows, but, you know, on the old West frontier, there was lots of crimes, especially trains and what whatnot. But, you know, NASA is now investigating the first ever crime in space. The case is believed to be the first time that someone has been accused of committing a crime aboard the ISS. And for all you people out there who don't know what that is, that's the International Space Station. I know that because my friend Laura would kill me if I never. <laughs> Astronaut Anna McLean, who returned to Earth on June 24th following a seven-month stint in space, has been accused of accessing her former partner's bank account from the International Space Station. McLean acknowledges that she did access the account but denies any wrongdoing. Her estranged partner, Summer Warden, filed the complaint with the Federal Trade Commission, claiming that her bank account was accessed without permission. A family member has also filed a separate complaint accusing McLean of identity theft. The dispute stems from an interwined nature of the pair's finances. According to her lawyer, Rusty Harden, McLean strenuously denies that she did anything improper and has been totally cooperating. What will happen if she's found guilty, however, remains unclear. I mean, I think it's quite easy what to do with her if she's found guilty. Throw her from the train. Or space station. Or whatever. <laughs> ah. Oh, one of the
one of the most fascinating parts of the paranormal. One thing I absolutely love to delve into and talk to people about. And I, I call them death stories, really, but... Some patients who died for a short period, we'll say, have reported things that they couldn't possibly have known about. And are these near-death, you know, experiences, so to speak, are they merely illusions? Seeing events flashing before your eyes, observing a bright light at the end of a tunnel, or feeling as though you're floating above your own body are just some of the things commonly described by patients who've had a near-death experience. But do such experiences represent genuine evidence that there is something more after we die? Or are they simply illusions produced by the chemistry of a dying brain or final moments? To answer this question is worth considering those rare cases where near-death experiences have revealed details about the physical world that the patient couldn't have otherwise known. So I've heard stories about this kind of stuff happen before. People have a near-death experience. They, they talk about flowing out of their body and they can see the things that's going on around them. And then when they regain consciousness, there's no way they could know that. And yet they knew it. Like, I heard a story about a lady who talked about a baby who was born and, and the baby almost died as well and was hooked to oxygen and, and she, she described it very well. And this was all in her near-death experience. And then they found out there was a baby like down the hall who just so happened to be on the same floor as her, which is very rare. Like, babies usually have their own neonatal unit and stuff in hospitals. But the baby crashed. They literally were taking it somewhere else in the hospital and had to perform their thing right then and there. It was too fragile to move in the incubator. So... I think that's incredible. Well, this one is really cool, too. One well-known case, which was reported by hospice physician John Larma, concerned an 80-year-old man who recalled floating above his body in the hospital trauma room. From the elevated position, he spotted a quarter dating back to 1985 sitting on top of an 8-foot-high cardiac monitor where nobody could have seen it without looking down from above. After he was resuscitated, he asked Lemma to go and check if it was actually there, skeptical of the claim. Lemma took out a ladder and climbed up to take a look. Sure enough, the coin was there. Another case was recorded by Kenneth Ring and Madeline Lawrence in 1993, when a patient described a near-death experience in which she was pulled upwards to the floors of the hospital until she emerged above the roof of the building, where she saw, get this, a red shoe. A doctor later investigated the claim, and sure enough, there really was a red shoe on the roof. Could such stories be evidence that the human soul, so to speak, is capable of living on outside the body? This, of course, and many other questions need answers. And uh, I, I think it's it's really incredible. You know, the thought that we survived death, man, very comforting. I, 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 I believe in the afterlife. I, I think there's something to all this. But man, to be able to to go back into your body and, and remember something from the immediate environment that you couldn't see while you were laying there, that to me is, it's hard to deny that. There's something to that. And uh, I can only hope that people research that further. My final story. <laughs> this one gets a music thing too. Oh, let's splice a few jeans, a few monkey jeans, so to speak. A team of Spanish scientists working in China have injected human stem cells into the embryo of a monkey. With transplant patients often having to wait years for organs, scientists have been looking for increasingly unorthodox ways to try and meet this ever-growing demand. The idea of crossing a human and a monkey to produce internal organs suitable for transplant has been floated before. However, in most countries, such experimentation is considered illegal. Although the experiment in this particular case was halted before the resulting creature could be born, scientists elsewhere have condemned the research as immoral. The biggest concern is that some of the human stem cells could make their way to the brain, potentially leading to consciousness. We are now trying not only to move forward and continue experimenting with human cells and rodent and pig cells, but also with non-human primates, said Juan Carlos Epizuza, who is the lead researcher. Our country is a pioneer and a world leader in these investigations, convincing others to pursue such a controversial line of research, however, is likely to represent something of a challenge in itself. And, I mean, there's only one thing that's going to possibly happen. You, you cross the stem cells with the monkey stem cells, and you're going to have Professor Monkey for a brain. Bonus points if you can tell me what uh, video game franchise that's from. Guys, we had a lot of crazy stories here 
just a lot of crazy stories. We had the Storm Area 51 turn into a concert. Sonar picking up Nessie and, you know, next month us actually having some more credible scientific evidence of what Nessie might actually be. Let's fingers cross it's something cool. <laughs> uh, tainted drugs turning people into wolfmen, you know, in particular babies, which is kind of sad. A uh, crime committed on the ISS, a near-death experience kind of expose there, and, and some credible reports of people actually seeing things while they were dead that they shouldn't be able to. And last, but certainly not least, we're kind of splicing genes here and going to make, like, men and, and monkey into the same thing. We're going to be man-monkey or monkey-man or whatever you want to call it. Oh, my goodness gracious. We're not even at Halloween, and this is already getting crazier here. Guys, all these stories have been odd to Newfoundland. And welcome to Dr. Norris Lair. <laughs> Power on. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey, I'll get the broom. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dr. Laura's Lair for September 2019. I love hearing from John where all of our listeners are from all over the world. So I really wanted to share a really cool experience we had here in Newfoundland and Labrador this summer. Squid rolled into shore, like a lot of them. Lots of little squids. Schools or groups of squids are actually sometimes called squads. So this massive squad of squid came from all over and went to this one harbor. It was beautiful to see them floating there. I'm going to get John to share a photo of them on his social account so you can truly see what an amazing phenomena it was. Just all lined up next to the shoreline. Simply amazing. Lots of people went out in their boats uh, to fish them, but you certainly really didn't even need to go out that far. You could see boats just offshore, hand over fist, as the squid jiggers pulled them out of the water. We were very fortunate to be able to go out and walk along the shore and just pull them out of the water with our hands. And we even had a little meal after the fact. According to locals, it has been almost 40 years since this has happened. I can't seem to find a real solid reason other than conditions like temperature have to be perfect for them to come so very close to shore. It seems that it happens in other places too, but for sometimes very different reasons. Suicidal squid beach themselves mysteriously sometimes. And some people think that this may be associated with red tide or poisonous algae. In order to prep our little squids for supper, we had to remove their ink sacs. The ink is no joke. It's black and oily. Every squid features three hearts. We weren't able to find them in our kitchen dissection. By their tentacles, under their eyes, are their mouths, which are actually a pointed little beak. Instead of a tongue, they have something called a radula. This little organ rests inside their beaks and is covered with seven rows of denticles, sharp, toothy, backwards pointing protrusions. Lots of animals are able to digest all of the squid except for the pointed beak of its mouth. These remains are often found inside of the stomachs of other little animals. I know that we took it apart and really had a good look at that little beak. And man, it's it's just like you'd imagine a beak to look like. It's pretty cool. A squid is able to swim by sucking water into their mantle cavity. Then they remove it through the siphon. This process continues all day long, even when they're sleeping. They really don't have an external shell, which is very common uh, for mollusks. Instead, they have an internal shell where the muscles attach and the supports the movement of the body. These look almost like little pieces of plastic or glass that run through the length of the body. If you've ever done any work with uh, shrinky dinks, it's almost like that material. Super flexible. The squids we found were only little and seven filled up a small shopping bag. Some of the larger squid can weigh more than 1,000 pounds. With the colossal squid, which is the uh, largest invertebrate in the world, and then there's the smallest, which is called the sepioid lid squid, and it is less than one inch long, and it weighs less than a quarter of an ounce. Some species of squid are able to actually glow in the dark. Research shows this is due to them having a bioilluminescent organ. 
I remember being told stories uh, of campers in Loom Bay Camp being awoken by a strange glow coming off the water by their cabins. Inching to the water in the damp night, they could see these glowing creatures. Pretty amazing. There are some very special species, too. The big fin squid species has ten arms, while all others feature only eight of them. There are also the same length, which is interesting because other species feature arms that have various lengths. The Humboldt squid is known to be very aggressive and will even attack sharks in water. And squids are really believed to be the fastest invertebrates in the world. Pretty amazing. Something that's really cool is that Newfoundland has an interesting and rich history with giant squid. For many years, giant squid stories were just that, stories among fishermen and explorers. They were considered mythical, like the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot. They were often associated with the Kraken. In one of Moby Dick's more memorable chapters, a giant squid slithers towards Captain Ahab's whaleboat. Apparently, Herman Melville wasn't a fan. Ishmael describes the squid as a vast, pulpy mass, complete with innumerable long arms radiating from its center, curling and twisting like a nest of anacondas. The giant squid's existence was established beyond a doubt, for sure, only in the 1970s, with the appearance of an extraordinary number of complete, both dead and alive, specimens in Newfoundland waters. These were meticulously documented in a series of papers by Yale zoologist Addison Emery Verrill. The earliest photographs of the giant squid were of two of these Newfoundland specimens, both from 1873. First, a single severed tentacle hacked off a live animal as it was attacking a fishing boat, and weeks later, an intact animal of two parts, the head and the limbs of this latter specimen, were famously shown draped over the sponge bath of Moses Harvey, a local clergyman, essayist, and amateur naturalist. Harvey secured and reported widely both on these important specimens as well as numerous others, and it was largely through his efforts that the giant squid became known to North American and British zoologists. Recognition of the giant squid, or the Arcteuthis, as a real animal led to the reappraisal of earlier reports of gigantic tentacled sea creatures, with some of these subsequently being accepted as records of giant squid. The earliest actually stretched back to at least the 17th century. Newfoundland has certainly been one of the locations with most frequent sightings of the giant squid worldwide. Giant squids are actually considered a pest in the fishing industry, as they are suspected to consume large amounts of fish and can get tangled into nets. Approximately 65 giant squid, one-fifth of all specimens, were found in Newfoundland waters. The giant squid is the largest invertebrate in the world, but it is very difficult to study this animal because they live so close to the bottom of bodies of water. The only predators that giant squid have are sperm whales. And while under attack from these whales, the squid can actually retaliate and inflict large circular wounds courtesy of their serrated rings around their suckers. The giant squid actually have eyeballs that are around the same size as a standard basketball. And some of these guys have been found to live more than 13,000 feet deep in water. Amazing. Well, another summer has gone and passed and everyone is heading back to school. And that includes all of our little squid friends and their own little squads. Thanks, John. Hello everyone, and welcome from Betty, your Oracle, to this month's edition of Words of Wisdom for your consideration and enjoyment for this month of September. So the words that I have chosen, word or words, that I have chosen for this month to talk about and to give you to consider would be autumn or fall. So according to Google, as everyone knows, I'm 
me and Google get along really well. Autumn is the third season of the year when the crops and fruits are gathered. Leaves fall in the northern hemisphere from September to November and in the southern hemisphere from March to May. In astronomy, it's the period from the autumnal equinox, which is September 21st, three weeks time yet, to winter solstice in December 21st. So why is autumn called fall? The word fall comes from the old English word phalen, F-E-A-L-L-A-N, which means to fall or to die. Over time, the phrase was shortened to fall. The use of the word fall fell out of favor in England. Today, American English uses fall, <clears throat> excuse me, while British English uses autumn. And, and here's a little funny. In the UK, we call autumn from, we call it autumn, sorry, from the French word autumn, A-U-T-O-M-P-N-E, and later the Latin, autumns, A-U-T-U-M-N-N-S. While in the USA, they say, we call it fall because the leaves fall down. <laughs> Just a little funny. Because I've often wondered, is it, do we call it fall because the leaves fall? Well, we may call it whatever we want. Here in the northern, northern Atlantic in September, generally we get the very best weather. And some years the leaves here, especially on the very east coast of Canada, begin to change color, maybe in September. Most years, not until October. But the picture of colors, the pictures from all over the world of all the colors that this coming season bring are oh so amazing. This is the most amazing planet when it comes to color. The color of nature never, ever ceases to amaze me. The pinks and the turquoises and the blues and the reds, the oranges, the yellows, where do they all come from? They say, they being the scuba divers, that the waters around our island, as cold as they may seem, are incredibly beautiful in a different way than the Caribbean, obviously very cold, a different kind of color because of the cold. So because I love research and I wanted to see what the meaning of these colors, even the navy blue ink that Laura has talked about, Let's see. Let's, let's just take an adventure and start with the dark colors, the, the blues. And I want to start this simply because of Laura's talk of the squid and the squid ink. So I looked up navy blue squid ink. Squid release their ink for protection. Natural in some areas. Ink and the ink yeah, sorry, I, that, that uh, sentence got a little bit fooled up there. The squid release their ink for protection. It's natural protection, obviously. And in some areas, the ink is used as a natural dye for fabrics, for anything. that they Even, I guess they could use it as a wash of paint if necessary for navy blue. There are multiple references to blue in online in whatever, wherever you decide to look, you will find multiple references to the color blue. But the reference that I found that most made most sense was from the website called Born Creative. Their site says 
blue represents both sky and sea, is associated with open spaces, freedom, intuition, imagination, expansiveness, inspiration, and sensitivity. That's just blue. But when you look at the color blue, there are so many different variations from ice blue, that beautiful light, almost silver, to the almost black indigo navy blue that our squid release. Isn't it interesting? The color blue has positive effects on the mind and body. It invokes rest and can cause the body to produce chemicals that are calming and exude feelings of tranquility. Blue can be strong and steadfast or light and friendly. Blue communicates. Isn't that interesting? Then the website Spiritual Meaning of Colors says, Dark blue symbolizes self-worth and intellect. Now, so we'll carry on with the other colors, with some colors that we see in the sky, for instance, the violet, the lovely violet of the flowers, the early morning or late evening sky, the sky before a thunderstorm, that very light violet, almost silver again sky. That website says it stimulates universal flow and imagination. It's the perfect color for healing, mind, body, and spirit. A sign of deep awareness and fulfillment. And I know with the color violet, we use the color violet a lot in metaphysical work. When I learned hypnotherapy, the day that we were to learn hypnotherapy, we were all told to wear something purple violet, lavender, whatever color falls underneath your heading of purple, we were asked to wear because it is so calming and because it is so relaxing. Then let's go to green, green of the grass and leaves, the green of money, the green of new growth, the green of healing, Archangel Raphael's healing green balm. According to spiritual meaning of colors, green means harmony, nature, love, communication, another communicating color, a healing color. It supports balance and acceptance, and it's a sign of youth, vitality, well-being, and good luck. And then we get into the lighter colors. So the green are the leaves before they, before our fall actually hits and pulls the green from the leaves. Then we move into the yellow. Here on the East Coast, a lot of, especially on the very East Coast where I live, so where I live is very, 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 the very eastern side of Canada. And most of the time around the city of St. John's Mount Pearl Paradise in this area, we don't get a lot of be- the beautiful reds and oranges. We start off with yellow. And the the color changes from a yellow into a gold. So what does yellow mean? Yellow is the first sign of fall here on the East Coast. Yellow means creativity, personal power, humor, lightness, and logic. It's a happy color. It helps us to be carefree and confident. It gives us hope, power, and courage. Yellow is one of my favorite colors, simply because There is so much expression in it. There is so much creativity in that color. 
all by itself. So then we move into the color gold next to yellow. Gold is a very protective color. When I have a client who is looking for a form of protection within themselves, I always talk about our golden ball of protection and how we close our eyes and imagine a golden light and then expand it until it encompasses our whole entire being, inside and out. There's your golden ball of protection. So gold is another early fall color. The meaning of gold is prosperity and strength. It has the energy of the sun and the lion with confidence and courage. Reigns of power. Gold. Ah, I love the color gold. It's shimmering, shiny color. And even as the leaves fade from the orange to the darker gold, the yellow, sorry, to the darker gold, that was pretty silly of me, because the next color I'm going to talk about is orange. And orange, again, so orange is vitamin C, for starters. This is the very first thing I think about when I think of orange. I think of orange as vitamin C. Orange, according to the website Spiritual Meaning of Colors, orange means enthusiasm, optimism, emotional expression. It stimulates creativity and productivity. It's an enthusiastic and warm color, and it increases harmony, affection, and abundance. I wear orange quite often. I love the feeling of the color. And it's very interesting for anyone who's listening who knows what our chakra system is. Our throat chakra is supposed to be indigo. So when we go through, if you close your eyes and you start at your crown, where your crown chakra is, so that's your white purple color, your third eye is your blue, your, or purple, sorry, is your third eye, your throat chakra is the indigo. And it's interesting, when I do my chakra work, my throat chakra is orange. It's the same color as tangerine. And we found out through research, a friend of mine found out that orange actually for the throat chakra happens when we're in the fifth dimension. So I may be doing some, some astral traveling back and forth between dimensions. That's why I have an orange throat chakra instead of blue, like most people. So <laughs> let's move on to the colors. How about the color red, when we see those gorgeous red leaves in the fall. And we just want to keep them that color. So red can, red is the red of Valentine's Day, the red of the heart, the red of love, the red of Christmas. Christmas, there's a lot of red in Christmas. Santa's suit is red. Mrs. Claus's dress is red. We wear red Red to me is a happy color. So again, according to the spiritual meaning of colors, red means vitality. It increases physical energy and stamina and stability, passion, spontaneity, and grounding. A very energetic color with a variety of meanings from passion to anger. My oldest sister actually always says for her that red means anger. You know, as in the expression, seeing red. A very vibrant energy of all things powerful and passionate is red. Red can mean so incredibly much. So much. When you think about it, what else is red? Well, you've seen red. We've all seen red stones on the ground. We've all seen 
the red of the color of our blood when when which is at, which is our life sustaining force so to me red is a beautiful color then from red we move into my very favorite pink i just love pink i just love pink when i learned the modality called rahani which is a healing modality for 3 days after i learned that modality every time i opened my eyes everything i saw was pink because rahani deals with the pink celestial angels rahani is a very beautiful color and pink the pink of the sky in the morning in the evening you, it, it it's really difficult to capture you've seen people trying with their cameras to capture this orange pink in the sky and your eyes can see it so much better than the lens of a camera can so what does it mean it means love tenderness femininity not necessarily just for women men who are in touch with their female side wear pink really well and should never be ashamed of wearing pink at all and i know that there are parents who wouldn't consider putting pink on little boys oh that's a girl's color no it's not it's a color anybody can wear it you can put it on your on your male dog for goodness sake so what is what is this website say of pink again it brings softness into our lives just that very gentle color pink then move on to silver the silver of the rain and the ocean silver is also associated with gold so it's the color of wealth and intuition and imagination and it's another color of protection you could use a silver uh, protection ball if you prefer instead of gold i always go to gold because i think gold there's more strength in the color gold than there is in silver in my mind that's how i feel about it silver is as gentle as gold is gold is more vibrant than silver in, in the, that, that's in my mind that's as i said words of wisdom for your consideration consider that so consider next the color white is white even a color the white of the large fluffy clouds of fall and summer the white of the snow in the winter how about white being purity peace faith humility how about white the white caps on the water white is a color white cleanses the mind and the body and then we move down to the color brown the color of the earth organic matter brown represents new seeds of life brown is a very grounding color now i've used the word grounding several times throughout this little conversation what is grounding is it what you put your feet on what actually is grounding what does it mean So for someone like me who <laughs> tends to love the clouds and want to be up in the clouds it's important for me to ground to ground meaning bring myself down to earth we are humans we belong on the planet earth we came to this beautiful blue planet with all its beautiful colors to experience the human condition and that's what we are all doing here and as the seasons change we find changes within ourselves as well we find changes not just within ourselves 
outside of ourselves. So the world is changing in the fall. With each season, the world changes and moves and flows. We just need to learn to move and flow with it. Because, you know, the more we flow with life itself, with the changes of the seasons, the more we just let go and flow, the easier life is for all of us, for every single one of us. We all live on this planet together. And as the old song goes, we are all in this together. Seasons, years, changes, and all. So, I will end off my September rant saying happy fall, happy autumn, happy harvest. Have a wonderful, wonderful month of September, everyone. Back to you, John. Attention all Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio listeners. The Odd to New Finland Paranormal Podcast brings you the best in East Coast esoterica on the first of every month. Together, we can keep it growing by sharing the show on social media, subscribing to the show wherever you may be listening to it from, and by leaving feedback about your favorite episodes. John certainly needs a friend like you to help make his dreams come true, minus the alien abduction dreams. That is not cool at all. The Odd to New Finland Paranormal Podcast. Always available. Always free. Always odd. Before I get started with tonight's amazing guest, the whole premise of this podcast is about discovering things that are out of the ordinary, the odd, so to speak. I've recently found a service that helps businesses stand out, just like me, from the crowd. It's called Blip Billboards. They help businesses of any size with any budget get seen on large format digital billboards. For me, seeing my podcast on a big billboard to get the word out was a dream come true. I never thought I'd be able to afford it in a million years. How could I ever afford advertising on billboards? But thanks to Blip and their pay-what-you-want approach, this dream is a reality that truthfully didn't cost me a whole lot. It didn't take too much of my time. All you have to do is pick the billboards you'd like to advertise on, set your daily schedule and budget, then upload your ad design. Once your ad is approved, your ad will be live for everyone to see. Blip Billboards is great for standing out locally or boosting awareness nationally. So whether you're a small tech startup, a local restaurant, or anywhere in between, your business can now afford to make these big impressions in the locations that matter to you. What would your billboard say? Try Blip Billboards today. Go to my special URL to sign up for a free account and you'll get a $25 Blip credit to help you get started at blipbillboards.com slash odd. That's blipbillboards.com slash odd. B-L-I-P-B-I-L-L-B-O-A-R-D-S dot com slash odd. Tonight's guest is no stranger to the paranormal. You may have heard of her before, or even may have even seen her on TV. She's the director, senior field researcher, international public figure, researcher of unknown paranormal phenomenon, medium, event coordinator, TV radio host, paranormal media, and case consultant, International Events Liaison for Canada's Most Haunted, Canada's Most Haunted Media Representative, and International Film. My tonight's guest, the Queen, shall we say, a paranormal research. Well, maybe I won't go that far with it. She'll probably slap me. <laughs> Tonight, I am so very honored to have Michelle de Rocher join me on the Odd to Newfoundland Paranormal Podcast. Michelle, how are you tonight? So thank you for having me. It's it's a, always a privilege to uh, you know have people reach out who I uh, I haven't spoken with before and uh, to see how vast the interest is and you know goes pretty far and wide. It's nice to have you know have a little bit of uh, dialogue going with somebody from Canada. <laughs> really though, right? Like, come on, your whole team. Know. Most of your team here is Canadian, though, aren't they? I, I, all Canadian. That's yeah. awesome. Have you got an EVP guy okay. yet? <laughs> Do we have an EVP guy? Oh gosh, yeah, we've got we've got several. Uh, I work with people 
pretty much around the world for stuff like that. I'm not like weird about my stuff. So if I get something fairly interesting, um, I'm always happy to, you know, to send it out sort of thing, you know, of course, with permission, you know, of my clients, I'm not one of these people that just, you know, puts it all over the place um, without permission, because I look at my alleged evidence as being pretty much shared between the people who bring me on board and, you know, and myself. It's not just about me. That's right. You're, you're basically so, taking a, a snapshot of someone's house, really, when you think about it. Like, say you're on location and, and you're hearing what's in there. Really, it's their business what goes on between their walls, <clears> even <throat> if the voices don't belong to them. <laughs> Well, exactly. <laughs> Either way, it's, it's you know, I, I'm a little bit um, different than many researchers. I mean, there are many out there with me that has the same outlook and unfortunately not enough. But I don't look at when someone contacts me. I don't look at it as, oh, hey, you should be lucky. I'm here to help you. Even though many feel that way, um, I always and thank you for entrusting yourself and your family. You know, I won't let you fall, I promise. And that's that. But again, I'm a big fan of something you said when you said alleged oh. evidence. I love that because right away that tells me, oh, my God, you, 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 you're right. This is alleged evidence. We don't really know what it is we're capturing. And uh, right away I was kind of like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Someone who's yeah, level-headed <laughs> because there's so Someone much out there. It. Right? I know. I know there's too many people, I think, who just figure, you know, they're going to get the manic photograph of the manic EVP and then all of a sudden it turns into like automatic superstar. And I always laugh, uh, you know, it's like it's all alleged at this point. There's nothing definitive. And believe me, I've got some phenomenal recordings. I mean, some of the stuff that people send me to say, hey, you know, this is happening in my house. What is it? I had a woman send me a video and um she was just walking around through the house. It was dark, and this big, tall, growly thing came out. And I'm sure it's, I, I'm pretty sure it might even be Aramaic. I don't even think it's Latin. And it's just unbelievable. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I think you have a problem. <laughs> 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 Let's like, just go with that and see what happens. <laughs> it's like, uh, you either have a demonic entity or there's a rat trapped inside a blender in your, uh, <laughs> in your cupboard and there. And he's not a happy rat. No. <laughs> no. He's like Master Splinter no, on, no. Uh, on steroids. He's really, really mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a growly guy for sure. <laughs> and you know, that's one of the reasons why I had so. to stop investigating myself because I was just like, man, like after doing this for five years, I cannot be objective anymore. I just believe too much. It's time for me to walk away and let somebody else handle this stuff because everything's a ghost now. I can't do this. <laughs> so it's good to hear that that, that level headedness is there. Uh, tell me a little tiny bit about maybe some of the shows and, and stuff that you've actually been a part of because there is a long list of, of wow, like I looked through your website, I was like, geez, man, you've been into everything. So kind of give me a, a couple yeah. rundown of some of the stuff you've been I've, involved with. I've been filming for, you know, roughly 17 years. And um, I think the most recent stuff that people will probably know is um, Haunted Case Files Season 1 and 2. I've done uh, Paranormal Survivor as an alleged expert, you know, because there's such a thing. <laughs> oh, anyway. thank God. So then here's the other part of it, right? As soon as you said that, I'm like, yeah, like the people always say they're experts in the field, but yet nothing has been proven. So uh -huh. it's kind of like, uh -huh. although I know there's it's something an, to all this. It's just, it's an unexplained field. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how I'm are you the master? Producers that, you know, <laughs> I know. Uh, I try to tell my producers that they're like, yeah, but they like that. I'm like, all right, whatever, you know? Yeah. But it's, yeah. So there's season two, three, four, and five of that. There's, um, my worst nightmare. Um, I did that one. Um, best filmed a new one, uh, probably in the last few months that should air in the fall called, um, I th believe it's called my paranormal nightmare. And, um, that's going to be super interesting. I've got two pending series offers. I've turned down my own series many times, honestly, if it's not a good fit, it's just, I don't care. I'm just not going to do it. But um, there's two pending offers right now that I'm actually contemplating. So we'll see. We'll see. But at the end of it all, and all the negotiations are said and done, if it's, uh, it's going to, you know, if it's going to fly the way I need it to fly. I kind of love the fact that we have a somewhat of a paranormal, paranormal celebrity, shall we say, on the, on the <laughs> New for Lab Paranormal Podcast. But, uh, you know, I'm far more interested. I, I hate to burst a bubble, but I'm far more interested in your research. Uh, I want to hear kind of like what you're – because, you know, 
I've been a part of many different teams. I've, I've kind of gone and done lots of stuff all over. And it seems like every team has their specialty. Like, my thing has always been the EVP mm-hmm. stuff. There's other people who are all about the photographs. Like, and there's other people who are all about, you know, like, trying to find out what's actually going on. <laughs> Try to kind of jump yes. in on there. Tell me a little tiny bit, Michelle, about, uh, you know, really what, what your fortes are, so to speak, as a team. What are you guys looking for when you go into a place? Uh, we work primarily in malevolent hauntings and demonic attachments and infestations. So basically, um, I only work with the nasties, have for many, many years. I have colleagues literally around the world who will put their cases off to me. Um, we can get them remotely cleared. And uh, we have access to, you know, a couple, three different consciousness different parts of the world um, that we can lean on as well. I do travel throughout the world. I have I have done that. So personally, people who want me personally, I've got at least, you know, 18 to 24 month waiting list. But for people who don't mind doing things remotely, which is, you know, we do probably an average remote clearings, I would say 50 a week at least. Wowzers. That's a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> you guys must be exhausted. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Because that doesn't count all the prep work that it takes and communicating with people and even after the fact sometimes you know someone's worst enemy you can get rid of whatever's there um but it's the mindset i've spent years working with people and educating them and working with mindsets because i don't want someone to think that every little sound they hear is something that's come back or something malevolent it really is something natural you know they just have to calm themselves down and uh and, and work on that and learn how to ground their energy and just, you know, focus themselves again and take their lives back. Because sometimes when you live for so long, you forget what it's like to actually have control and have silence and not everything you hear or something bad. Gotcha. There's a lot of work involved far beyond the clearing. Yeah, absolutely. And there's just so much work involved with all aspects of the paranormal. And this is something a lot of people don't understand. They, they kind of go out, they, they watch some old episode of Ghost Hunters from back in 2004 and they say, <laughs> let's do this. I was like, okay. And then they go out and they yeah. buy the matching t-shirts and then they, <laughs> they hit the, uh, yeah. they hit the haunted locations. <laughs> yeah. And then they realize. Good God, this is an insane amount of work. Like, I always tell people, you know, just like my thing, once again, EVP, I love the audio stuff. But, I mean, I used to set mm-hmm. up six or seven recorders, you know, in, in a small area, mm-hmm. and you do an eight-hour investigation. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's six times eight, plus all the times I got to go back and hit rewind. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's an insane amount yeah, of, of time to, to go over that data, let alone all your time stamping, and it, it's just an insane amount of work. And uh, another reason why I loved Holzer so much was, uh, you know, pen and paper. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I know. I know. I used to try to tell. I had one specific producer who used to say, okay, we're going to go and investigate, and you're going to, you're going to, you know, analyze all of this information for us. And I'm like, okay, we've got like four or five video cameras out. You've got, you know, remote cameras out. And, you know, you've got like 10 rooms here with a recorder in each room, and they're filming or going rather hours of peace. I'm one person, you know, and because they wanted me to do it. It's not like I could say to a member of my team, okay, here, just do this. It's like, no, you know, they wanted me to do it. And I'm just like, <laughs> it would take me a week to do one episode just because it'll take me forever <laughs> to go through all the findings, you know? <laughs> no. That's like, <laughs> but, know. <laughs> then you're also on TV. So, you know, you got to do everything five yeah. times anyway. And uh, to get it from different no, exactly. angles, so that that's that must be incredibly incredibly taxing. But it's interesting to hear. Um, you know, one of the things in the in the bio I read there actually is that you guys have a science and you kind of approach, but you also use the mediums as well. So with your scientific mm-hmm. type approach, and I won't say it's scientific, you know, not heaven forbid. No. <laughs> but I will say that mm-hmm. it's, it's no, science no. based. You know, we're, we're trying to get recreatable data, stuff like that. What uh, what kind of the what kind of part of the method I guess I'm trying to say here is what you guys kind of stick with when you guys go into a location uh what, what kind of set you apart from the average shall we say run-of-the-mill ghost hunters out there well i'll tell you i mean i have a huge arsenal of equipment um if you've seen it on tv at one point chances are i have it is it all effective no no <laughs> i do public appearances people want to know that this exists some of it i never even touch it's just like, yeah, it exists. Here it is. Piece of crap. Don't use it. Don't waste your money. Here's an alternative. It's cheaper. Blah, 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 blah. You know, 
I'll say it like it is. Um, but again, with the type of cases that I do, um, I find it's very seldom now that we go in places and do full investigations because um, I'm fairly seasoned. I know pretty much what I'm looking for when I'm going into a case. If somebody says to me, okay, you know, this is some of the recordings I have or this is what's happening, members of the family are experiencing you know a b c and d i'm kind of like okay i think this is what we have so you have to understand that the family members they don't want to communicate with what's there they don't care what's there it's not up to me to go to somebody else's home and start making invitations by even doing evps and, and requesting dialogue it's a form of an invitation now that's okay if you're doing that with you know with spirits you know and but when you're dealing with alleged again demonic um, entities or really malevolent entities, and I'm going to start communicating with them, and, then, and they're wondering, you know, I've got some entity acting up that goes, well, you wanted to talk to me like 15 minutes ago. I'm going to keep you up all night now. Like, you ha you're leaving people behind communicating. I will I'll throw down some recorders and such. I love EVPs, much like yourself. We do have, you know, an SLS. You know, we, we can use the SLS. We, you know, we've got different cameras that we set up. I I get more stuff by speaking with the family, walking around with a recorder in my hand. I'll hear things growling while I'm talking. I'll hear things like <laughs> calling me all kinds of foul things all while I'm having a conversation. So I'm not directing anything at the entities at all. They're just kind of jumping in because they don't, I don't really think they like to be ignored, but um, you know, that's, that's very different. Um, I, I, work with um i always say she's like best remote viewer on the on the planet and has been tested as, as such you know and she's very very accurate and have been validated you know like a hundred times at least and um the thing is, is she came on board without being involved in the paranormal at all what she used to do is basically find victims of human trafficking missing children things like that and uh very successfully and um you know, what turned out to be a fan, uh, you know, connecting up and, and meeting, um, you know, started working together. And now she probably out of everyone on the team works the closest with me and, um, you know, has, has gone on now to do, you know, all kinds of, um, you know, paranormal and media and so on and putting stuff out there. And she's uh, she's wonderful. I love it when something comes up and I'm talking to a client, let's say, and you know, I view it differently than her. I mean, she's like way far out there. But, you know, she'll basically do something. I'll say, well, go here, go here, go here. And all of a sudden the client goes, oh, my God, everything just changed. Everything feels different in here now. And the client has no idea what we're doing. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole, it's, it's, God, it's just so very different. It is. It you is. Know, absolutely. Like, like it, it kind of sounds like the polar opposite of what I love to do, which is kind of go look for the friendly ghosties, to be honest. Uh, I like the I like the gals and guys, especially the, shall we say, the the soldier types. That's my thing. I love that kind of stuff. So it's, it's interesting to right. hear that. Now, when you're saying you're dealing with demonic entities and stuff like that, and I know this is kind of basic knowledge stuff, but there's a lot of people who listen to this podcast who probably don't know the difference between here and, you know, Dead Uncle Larry and Beezlebub. So what's what would say would be your main <laughs> differential? Like you said growling a few times, and that's something I like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the headphones would be off mm -hmm. for me. I'd be like, yeah, guys, you're on your own. Uh, burn that Ouija board and see you later. <laughs> Tell me a little tiny bit about what you're looking for, what would differentiate say a demonic type thing from just your every average everyday ghost so to speak uncle sam for example or uncle fred isn't going to do something that's going to make you feel uncomfortable or um if you've got you know a spirit that may be lost some you know and confused don't understand that they're a dead b we can't all hear them or we don't care to hear them. And sometimes it really is just a matter of explaining, um, you're dead, I can't hear you, I'm not capable, I'm not trying to be rude. You know, um, when you're dealing with inhuman spirits or entities, um, they tend to have very foul smells. Um, they tend to do a lot of scratching and knocking within the walls, or they may scratch you. Um, you know, I, I've had them do all kinds of things. I've had them call my house. I've had them cut in through phone calls. I've had been up with phone messages, and I've got, you know, these things freaking like growling and calling me every name in the book. It's a good thing I don't get offended by some of these words. <laughs> I just sort of laugh. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever, you know. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> a lot. Day, what do you want? <laughs> you know, it's a PG <laughs> show. It's a PG show. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I like to bleep sometimes. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes yeah, I make a so chicken noise. Know. Sometimes I make the chicken noise in there, right? <laughs> Just breaks up the mood completely. So these yeah, things are cursing on you. He's <laughs> like, sorry. so you're in the middle of an yeah. investigation. This thing is cursing you up and down, telling you off, and you're just kind of standing there, like not really caring a whole lot, just documenting, correct? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't. I don't react the same. <laughs> oh yeah, I've learned early on not to show fear. Um, it's not that I don't necessarily feel fear. Um, not so much anymore, not like it was in the beginning. Um, you know, I mean, I've been grabbed and things like that. I just, you know, like I said, I'll jump like anyone else. But on an average, I'll just say, oh, I'm sorry you're having such a bad day. It's like growling and growling. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Someone having a bad day. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It's horrible. <laughs> you know, but it's just I am very unorthodox. I don't try to encourage any kind of communication you know um i've had all kinds of things like when i go to a house or i'm about to go to a house for example if i have a knocker if someone says this thing's always knocking and all of a sudden i'll get knocking literally right beside me and i'm trying to get myself ready and i'm just walking out the door and i'm like i'll oh, see you in an hour mister and that's all i say and i'm gone <laughs> i'm leaving there <laughs> so that then i do it just like that not even kidding <laughs> So yeah. Canada, Canada's most haunted sounds like a lot of fun to be part of this team. So oh, sure. there's a many people on your team. Why don't you tell me a little tiny bit about your team? I, I, I'd love to hear about some of your members and uh, in particular, anybody who's been working with you for a while. Um, I've got, I'm very fortunate because I have not been through a lot of members. Um, we're been very solid team. You know, I've got um, Adrienne and Melissa. I mean, these girls have been with me. Oh, my gosh, probably at least 10, 12 years. And they travel um, to Europe with me, which is awesome. You know, so Adrienne, of course, is Romanian, which is great. She's, you know, European. So we'll, we go to Romania and a girl speaks the language. It's perfect. We've got to go. And I call them my travel guru because she'll say, okay, what are we doing? You know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. I've got a whole list as long as my arm. And uh, every time I, I travel with her, it's like, okay, no problem. And she has me on schedule to the point where it's almost annoying sometimes because, you know, she's hauling me up at like 530 in the morning. We got to be on the flight here, here, and here. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to go. I'm tired, you know, I'm being whiny. And she's just like, <laughs> let's go, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I love it because I don't even have to really think with these girls. It's like they know what I like to drink. They know what I like to eat. They know what I have to do. And I can be talking to a client and oh, seriously, if there's a no time, I don't, I, to me, acknowledgement is empowerment. I'm there for the people. I don't care about the thing that's like having a conniption in the back room. For example, one of the girls will get up and they'll go take care of it. I stay with the client. I'm not interested in something trying to take me away from the client. I'm there for them. Um, you know, then I've got uh, a gentleman named Ivan who does all my crypto stuff. You know, I've got um, my, you know, my partner in crime, you know, Wayne, who is, um, I always say, you know, he's, he's, he's got exceptional hearing. So he's awesome when it comes to voice recordings and working with the ghost box. And, you know, then I've got Brandon who does a lot of just anything that I need him to do. You know, I mean, we're, we're fortunate. We're, we're solid and I very seldomly bring people on board, you know, and of course, you know, Amelia, my RV, who is a second to none, as I always say. And, um, it's just, I always say best team on the planet and they are. I never have to, never have to do any reprimanding very, very, very seldomly. Any people who have had, I've had issues with, let's say, on the team in the past well, we got our growing pains out a long 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 time ago so they're long long gone so anybody who's in place now they're basically meant to be in place that's a wonderful feeling to have people to do what you love with and uh oh yeah that's, that's great yeah. to hear uh one thing i heard that time that was kind of popped in my mind was ghost box that's something i absolutely adore now there's a lot of people out there who hate it and and mm -hmm. you know anybody who's a researcher of evp is going to tell you right now 
You had every reason to hate that thing. Listen to that go for like six <laughs> hours on your audio. <laughs> is never any fun. Uh, Can't say enough nice yeah. things about the silenced AM setting, by the way, on the PSP7. Can I say enough? <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah. I always look at that, though, as a different type uh, of communication. That, to me, is, is kind of like ITC, you know, instrumental transmutation. And, and, you know, a lot of people yeah. call it EVP, but it really isn't. It, it, it's They're using a medium, basically, besides just your ear. So mm-hmm. tell me a little tiny bit about some of that stuff, some of your equipment, so to speak, you guys have been using. You, you mentioned you had a thousand gadgets. So what's some of the ones that you really love? Um, I love the ghost box. I had a ghost box built for me probably within a few years of Frank Sumption, you know, reinventing um, the ghost box. It's, I, you know, I do have the SB7. I do have it. Um, I don't mind it. It's great for when I, I do have to travel because the box that I had built like eons ago is very sophisticated and it's a fair size. You know, um, I also have a portal, um, you know, the portal plus, which you connect, you know, a ghost box to or any sort of, you can do apps, which, you know, I, I'm, I'm funky with apps, but now, you know, these cell phones are just so darn sophisticated. I can't even really go there anymore because some of them are pretty amazing. But the portal is basically an amplifier and um, it's not a magic box like a lot of people think it is. It's an amplifier. But what I like about it, especially when you combine it with the ghost box, is it filters out a lot of background noise and it's got a great feature on it, which is reverse mode. So, you know, when you're bringing in sounds through an amplifier, everything should come out in forward speech. But when you're using it in reverse, you know, everything comes in, but it, it goes in and it gets jumbled along the way. So when things come out in forward speech, a spirits have to do that. They've had to change that around. So, you know, it's just one more thing that is it a validation? No, it's not. But it's something that makes it a little bit more uh, encouraging that you're actually dealing perhaps, you know, with a spirit. I can tell you the growlies come through loud and clear. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, oh, yeah. They can't stop them from anything. But uh, it's, it's interesting. You know, um, there's this, I like the ovulus. I like playing around with the ovulus. But again, you know, I think I like the older ones better than the newer ones. Um when it comes to equipment, I'm funky. I'm very old fashioned because the things that I deal with, you know, I'm not there to communicate with a good old fashioned. I, I still love analog recorders. You can't fudge a tape. You can't fudge a negative. You just can't. That's right. And that's something I can totally agree with here. Cause you know, like yeah. when I wrote my book about uh, electronic voice, voice phenomena and I can actually cover the ghost box section because spirit mm-hmm. box or ghost box is something that's been around for a long time now. Um, mm-hmm. you know, one thing I absolutely adore what was, you know, I used to not believe in this thing at all until I started getting like multiple word responses that were intelligent. It was like, man, like this is crazy. Like I'm hearing my name and it's telling me what I'm doing in the room. Okay. Go yeah. surreal. <laughs> There's something to this stuff. Right. And then like, I could totally yeah. agree with you. I'm a bit funky about equipment too, because people swear up and down that a K2 meter works and I've never really had much success with one. So Go figure. I've, right? I've been okay with the K2s, you know, but I went a step further. The people who built my ghost box for me, I had them, you know, they, they offered me an alternative to the K2. And what they did is they took the interior of the K2 and they put it in a steel box and put this big antenna on it. So you can't manipulate that thing at all. There's no way. You just flip a switch and you just set it on the table and then you can ask yes or no questions with it. And that's what I've had the greatest success with. Well, there you go. And and then once again, maybe the reason why I don't, I'd never really had much luck capturing a lot of pictures of spirits, so to speak, is because I was never really a camera guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and this is what know. I mean by having people on your team who who have a forte in all these things. I'm only one person, just like yourself. And yeah. uh, you know, so I love to hear that you guys are using that kind of equipment and and getting different kinds of results in different locations. So here comes the fun questions. I always call them the fun <laughs> questions because these are the ones that we really get to the meat and potatoes of, of what you do. Tell me about probably one of the, the most, shall we say, believable cases you ever covered. Like, let's talk about one that really blew you away. There was a lot of data collected. you just like, wow, there's something here. Let's hear a little tiny bit about that, because I'm sure there must be one case that kind of really sticks out in your head maybe more than the other ones, okay? It's, it's tough because I've been to some amazing places in the world. You know, 
um, I've been to the haunted forests of Romania and had unbelievable experiences. You know, we had a skeptical individual with us, which I'm like, okay, perfect. And things are going on that even this guy's going, uh, I don't think this should be happening. <laughs> you know, <laughs> to me, to me, that was worth its weight in gold right there. But the downside of all of that is the only thing that we were left with, all of our equipment just got nuked. Seriously. All we had left was a small, like the SB7, it was just a regular, like, small ghost box, handheld, and I think we had an iPhone 4 left. That was literally it. Everything else just got the life sucked out of it. Wow. And we had unbelievable, unbelievable stuff that came through. Um, but again, by the end of it all, you know, we probably got more stuff after the fact because never was there falling back to our room. And was making the phone ring and everything, nobody on it. And I mean, you know, the rest of the crew was upstairs. They were going through the same thing. It was just like, what the freaking heck? You know? <laughs> but, but um, you know, um, I've had, again, I've had many amazing places where, you know, one place in specific on Lake Huron, um, this thing you said, just call the house. Um, we could go there at any given time and... Um, and I've never not had an experience in that house. Even when I was there not investigating, just visiting, things would be going on, you know. And I'm like, good grief, this is insane. You know, like I'm spending the night there one night. And I wake up in the middle of the night and something's pulling the blanket <laughs> up. And it's trying to cover me up. And I'm dying of heat. But in the meantime, I'm thinking, okay, it's either a kind spirit who's just trying to warm me up. Or it's going to be one of those you know, malevolent things that's going to try to kill me. <laughs> so I, have to just, I have to sit here right now and decide which one it's going to be and how comfortable am I with it. So, but I mean, this went on all the time there. So it's not like it was anything, you know, I mean, it was spectacular for sure, but there was never a time where something did not happen. Things are always happening over there. So yeah, all kinds of, I've got hours and hours of recordings of this place. Love it. Michelle, is there any plans for you to write a book about all this someday? <laughs> oh, I get that question so often. I think when my life settles down a little bit, I will write a book. I will write the book because I have been asked so much. I have so many locations. I've had so many experiences. I've helped so many people. Um, you know, there's so much to tell. And everybody keeps saying to me, you need to get this on paper because if something ever happened to you, you know, like your techniques are really unusual. They work and you just, we love your stories. And like, I guess when they're gone, they're gone. Right. So I'm like, well, all right, I guess I can do that. <laughs> you know, I'll do it one day. Well, know? I'll tell you what, you, you get a book out there. You let me know and I'll have you back on so you can promote Absolutely. that book because my crowd are avid readers. They love to read and uh, mm -hmm. they cannot get enough of people who are into the paranormal really deep like yourself. Right. Tell me, right. tell me, and, and here comes the end of the interview. And I, I love this question. Tell me what the end goal for you really is. You know, everybody starts like they have their own little mission, so to speak, that ends up being a lot freaking bigger than we thought. <laughs> mm, <laughs> what yeah. is your, your end game, so to speak, with the paranormal? What, what would be your, what would be your dream come true, so to say? You know, some people talk mm. about capturing the Holy Grail, you know, the full body operation. Other people talk about, you know, convincing yourself that there really is something to all this. <laughs> There's other people who are so, so against it all that their goal is to just be able to, to close it and say there's nothing to it. What, what, what exactly would be Michelle's goal? Um, you know what? I don't know so much that it's a goal. I'll keep seeking answers to questions. I'll never stop learning and I never do stop learning i learn something new every day i make a point of that um but one thing i have learned is that what i thought let's say this was through research i realize it's so much bigger than that so i want to definitely keep digging until i get to to the answer what, what to, to the answer to to all those questions what is the source where does it all come from it's far vaster than any of us realize. Like, and I'm learning that even 17 years in, I can say there's still things that boggle the mind for me. So is it a goal? My goal has always been to get answers and, and it'll be to continue to get answers. But for me, it's just about saving souls more than anything, saving people. There are so many people who have trouble or, or have been, you know, 
stuck with these real malevolent things. And uh, the more people I can help, to me, that's in the end, that's what it's about. The people. You know, we live in an age right now where people are a lot more comfortable talking about depression and things like that, you know, mm -hmm. and it took a long time to get there. I wonder how long it will take for us as a people to be more comfortable talking about these things. I wonder if that's on the horizon for us all. My guest tonight has been Michelle DeRoche. She has been an awesome guest. Thank you so much, Michelle, for gracing the Odd the Newfoundland Paranormal Podcast. Mm -hmm. My, My first paranormal celeb, so to speak, of 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. My pleasure. Have a good evening. <laughs> Well, the time to say goodbye is upon us. But don't worry, you can keep track of the Odd the Newfoundland Paranormal Podcast very easily. It's available on Stitcher, iTunes, Podbean, and TuneIn Radio. Just look for the Odd the Newfoundland Paranormal Podcast banner. Of course, if you'd like to keep up to date, you can always check out the Odd the Newfoundland Paranormal Podcast Facebook page, drop a like, and every single time a new show goes up, you'll be notified. You can also follow me, John Mallard, on Twitter, at O-D-D-T-O-N-F-L-D. -D -D -D. That's odd to Newfoundland. From the oldest city in North America, I bid you adieu. From the Odd to Newfoundland Paranormal Podcast.